and welcome back for part two of Let's Play Battlefield 1942 Battle of the Bulge. In the first part, the Germans were completely disorganized and scattered at the very beginning of the map, and the Americans bled us almost to death. Now we seem to have recovered from that early base camping, at least in terms of getting all of our tanks spawned and getting them grouped together. But of course, we've got this insurmountable deficit in tickets, so the only way we can possibly win is to capture all of the flags. The way the Germans normally win on this map is just to very quickly stop the bleeding, and usually that just amounts to one tank rolling down to this river flag here and neutralizing it unopposed and capturing it. Sometimes they take the windmill. But just to get the bleeding stopped early on so you're somewhat in the ballpark of being uh, equal in tickets between Germans and Americans. After that, the Germans should be able to win with kill to death ratio because the Germans have more tanks and as the round goes on the Americans really get lazy about spawning in back bases and grabbing tanks. Instead they start spawning as infantry at the bases nearest to the action. They just want to quickly spawn in and get some kills. But since the Americans spawn in as infantry and the Germans are all about tanks, infantry versus tank, obviously the tank's going to have an edge. Even if the infantry start spawning in as bazooka troops, the tanks are still in good shape. They can stay at a distance, they can move quickly and eliminate the anti-tank soldiers. Meanwhile, the Germans that do spawn in as, say, a medic or an assault have a huge advantage over the American anti-tank troops. But in this case, the Americans really did a good job on defense at the beginning of the round and managed to slow our progress and even base camp our main base, whether or not that's actually permitted on this server. And that gave the Americans enough of a lead where they could be very comfortable in winning, just as long as they hold on to one flag. You see that church in the distance. The church is present in almost identical copies in, I believe, four out of the six Western Front maps. There always seems to be a church place to hide and gather, collect yourself in your infantry, get away from the tanks for a while, maybe reload your ammo or your health. In this case, you can't uh, defend the flag capture radius from within this church, but on a number of the other maps it is possible. The priest that just killed me is the American version of the artillery, although I didn't see where it was coming from. One artillery piece will spawn at the American main base, and so it may have been perched up on the hill over there. Well, the main base is very quiet and peaceful now, fortunately, which means the Germans can just spawn in, wait around for the tank. If you die in a tank, you just spawn over here again, and shortly after you respawn in, your tank will appear. There's just a greater delay in spawning for the vehicles as opposed to the infantry. often get in the way when you're trying to maneuver around them. Right, there don't appear to be any infantry trying to cross the river, which they often do try to do. So I'm going to head over to the bridge over there and head back into the city flag. The city flag is always a great place to pick up kills, but um, we're going to have to actually push well beyond that going to actually win this. There are a lot of friendly infantry over here, and those are friendly mines you can see from the uh, red skull and crossbones indicator. Now, if you were on, on the American side, it would be a good idea to mine that bridge because it slows the progress of the tanks. 
and if you're on the American side, in virtually every case, it's a good idea to put obstructions on the bridges. But since you're on the German side, you don't want to do that because you need your tanks to be able to pass freely. The Germans being on the attack are more likely to be in need of crossing the bridges. And in this particular case, where we can only win by getting all the flags, you must cross the bridges. So it was a really bad idea for that engineer to put landmines over there. And it cost me some valuable time as I had to drive all the way over to the other bridge. Now we're making pretty decent progress here, although we're down to around 34 tickets. You can uh, take a little shortcut over here if you approach the hill at just the right position. You can drive right over it. That's particularly useful if you want to bypass the city flag entirely and head directly to the American main base. Here, though, I'd like to pick up some more kills, and I've just spotted one of the American Germans. I'll kill any, any infantry that I see along the way, but I really want to get uh, right behind that American Sherman tank so I can take it out in one hit. The Americans, I believe, only have one control point now that spawns any tanks, so eliminating one of the tanks will uh, eliminate half their tanks available. Of course, it'll respawn, but it's just really useful. And that would be the American artillery. The artillery pieces are vulnerable to both machine gun fire and uh, tank shells. The machine gun doesn't do much damage, but it does just enough to where you can eliminate the RD in one hit with the tank. And with the destruction of that American tank, that was actually the entire American armed, uh, armored force uh, at this point. So they'll all have to respawn at their main base. And now I'm free to cause some trouble over here to the infantry for whatever reason are spawning over here. And I guess this is a good example of people just spawning close to the action. It's very unwise to spawn as an infantry at the city flag because you're almost always going to be right in the open and easy prey for the tanks. If we had more tickets, of our own, I might even be inclined to allow them to spawn in at that flag and not capture the flag because they're so easy to kill over there. But since we need all the flags and since there was infantry over there already taking the flag, I decided to just kind of join in on that. And now the Americans are down to one flag, and this is a great flag for them to be stuck at, from the German perspective, that is. They spawn right in the open. They spawn in a very small and therefore predictable spawn radius. They have no flags that spawn at that uh, control point. I mean, no vehicles there. You can send a tank shell right through the bunker, through the window, if you aim it just right. And if I had to pick one flag for them to be stuck at, it would be that one for sure. We're down to 17 tickets. If they haven't managed to slip away and try to go up to the windmill or anything, we may even be able to pull this off. And that would definitely be one of the great comebacks of all time. When you're in this camp position, uh, aim for any obstacles or anything that you can uh, get splash damage against, kind of like a backstop. And that'll amplify the... Uh, ability of your tank shell to kill nearby infantry. We're really closing in. Lots of uh, friendly tanks in the area. Some good use by tanks along this river here, intercepting the soldiers as they try to get out. And I just accidentally team killed someone who was using their dynamite, their X-Packs, to detonate the entire team as it spawned in. That was unfortunate, but at least we already had an infantry over there to neutralize the flag. And if not too many Americans were able to escape the net, we may actually be able to pull this off. They bleed tickets very quickly here, since we have all the flags. We've got a pretty good defense all around. And that does it. We, we run, I can't believe we actually won this one. That'll do it for the Battle of the Bulge.